Governor Johnson, thank you so much for yeah, being here today. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Uh, I know it's an exciting time, and uh, we're very excited to start asking you the questions. I know we're limited on time, so good. Uh, good. We want to just get to it. Um, so you're carrying the libertarian platform. You've been the nominee. Um, I feel like libertarianism have spread through the mainstream. It made the breakthrough. Uh, this year, it's as popular as, as it's ever been. Um, one person that we all love, obviously, in this movement is uh, Dr. Ron Paul, who really kind of took it to a different level in 2008. And uh, I, I remember, I think you were asked a question one time during the debates in, in 2012 when they asked who would be a running mate out of all the candidates on the stage. And uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said that Ron Paul would be someone you'd consider. Yes. Uh, well, they said, who would you... Who would you pick if you had to pick someone on stage as a running mate? And yes, I did pick Dr. Paul. So my he didn't pick me, but he didn't I pick you. Him. And I, I was kind of sad because I saw that. I said, "Well, <laughs> you know," but um, he did say that he, he endorsed the Libertarian candidate for this election. Um, but my question is, do you see anywhere any role for Ron Paul in a Gary Johnson administration, whether it's a cabinet position or possibly an advisor? Or, well, uh, first of all, I don't think Ron Paul would take it. Um, I, I think that uh, he and Rand Paul, um, you know, they've hitched their wagon to the Republican Party. And, uh, yeah, I would certainly welcome any support. I would welcome any advice. But um, I don't think it's forthcoming. It's just the reality. Have you guys um, had any communication with the no, Ron Paul none, camp? No. no. They haven't reached out to you or vice versa? No. No. Well, we've reached out to them in the past. And, like I say, he's pitched his wagon to the Republican Party, and you know, that, that's, I, I, I get it. Um, you're, you're pretty big on uh, drug prohibition and uh, ending the war on drugs. You wanted to legalize marijuana, which uh, of course we all fully support here, and would you also legalize the growing of industrial hemp? Uh, yes, commodities yes. To be traded? Well, I think that's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, we're, we're importing hemp from China. We can import it and we can actually use it uh, to, to manufacture, but we can't grow it. It just makes no sense whatsoever. And to follow up on that, uh, would a President Johnson pardon the countless nonviolent drug offenders that are locked up? Yes, I think that there needs to be a process to do just that. Um, I think that, and not only those that are locked up, but there are tens of millions of Americans who are convicted felons that have served out their sentences, you know, they're, they're okay with the law, but today they're convicted felons, and there needs to be a pardoning process for those that um, have, in fact, uh, done their punishment, and uh, look, let's get them back in the status of uh, non-felony, that they can vote. Um. The libertarian platform carries uh, a non-interventionist foreign policy, and uh, when you look at the war hawks and uh, everything that we've been seeing as far as our ag aggressive stances towards certain countries and uh, military adventurism, uh, even at home, our civil liberties, I feel like a lot of us believe it, it, the baseline that everybody uses is national security. And uh, you know the events of September 11th were kind of like the, the, the propeller that allowed us to kind of have a more aggressive foreign policy, preemptive strikes, uh, privacy invasion at home. Um, in the light of recent, uh, you know, the 28 pages that were released as far as Im implicating the Saudi government within that tax, and, you know, clearly it's a controversial subject that a lot of people have different crazy theories about. In the light of all the new evidence, would, would, a, would you as president reopen that investigation and kind of look into what exactly happened that day? Well, uh, I, I don't know if it needs to be reopened. I mean, this is the report that's finally been released, and clearly uh, Saudi Arabia has played a role, something that I think we've all surmised. Um, Saudi Arabia, a country that doesn't allow women to drive or vote? Um, right. <laughs> so I imagine, like, as a president, we would st certainly stop our propping up of their extreme regime? Would that be something that you'd look into? 
Absolutely, yes. Uh, re and, and, and Not regime change. Well, right. uh, but I, I want to make it really clear that uh, Johnson administration is going to live up to all existing uh, treaties and obligations, um, and that would be taking office. A re-examination re of those treaties and those uh, agreements going forward, you know, this, the world is dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, Donald Trump running, you, you and uh, Bill Weld have been fairly critical of him. You think? Absolutely, and we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us wrong. It's absolutely deserved. But it seems that with Hillary, you're kind of like the nice guys with her. Um, but you haven't been as uh, critical as for, you know as far as the um, her whole situation with the FBI indictment and her email uh, handling of her emails, um, especially with the uh, the DNC leaks that just came out. Um, what's your position on that? You know, I've never been a stone thrower. I, I think there are a lot of others that throw stones, and I think there's a whole basket full of stones here that are being thrown and probably justifiably so but I'd rather spend my time talking about these issues uh, in, a, in a way that moves the country forward now with regard to Hillary Clinton uh, if there's one word to describe Hillary it's beholden is anything going to change when it comes to Hillary Clinton yeah government's gonna try and uh, interject itself in more in our lives even more so it's going to result in higher taxes and then I think that uh, Hillary Clinton has been the architect one of the architects one of the premier architects of our foreign policy that has made things less safe not more safe and if I may use Libya and Syria as an example Libya and Syria Obama and Hillary go in and and by the way this was not purposeful. I'm not saying that this was purposeful, but this happened. They go into Libya and Syria, both of them, and we arm the opposition in both of those countries. Well, the opposition is aligned with ISIS. And so the opposition gets beaten. All the arms fall into the hands of ISIS. This is our, and you can't make this up. Was it purposeful? No. But did it happen? Yes, and why? It was, it was Obama, and it was Clinton, and its root is militarily intervening in situations that we shouldn't be militarily intervening in. Um, is there a role for uh, the judge Andrew Napolitano in a Gary Johnson presidency? I hope so. Uh, as President of the United States, uh, we're planning on hiring both Democrats and Republicans. Of course, whether we hire Democrats or Republicans, uh, they're going to have a libertarian bent on things. And I think, uh, I think Judge Napolitano is a real libertarian star. So if he wants to apply for anything, uh, I'd have to say in this interview that uh, I would certainly uh, love to see that uh, application take place and see what that was for. Let me ask you this, let me ask you this question or just pose this to everybody. Right. If Clinton or Trump is elected, uh, they're going to hire Democrats or they're going to hire Republicans. Um, I think government will be more polarized than ever. Democrats are never going to get along with Trump. Republicans are never going to get along with Clinton. What if there was a third option? Libertarian takes office, hiring Republicans and Democrats libertarian bent and really humorously in a good-natured way in a cooperative way just calls out both parties to come to the table and deal with issues that genuinely have to be dealt with which scenario do you think might result in possibly moving the country forward right the best of both <laughs> I or, think or the least of both that's my pitch that's my um, pitch that's a that's an interesting thing because I feel like a lot of us, especially from the media standpoint, you know, and and not just uh, the media itself, but the politicians, you know, the, the legitimate politicians at least, uh, people such as yourself, people in the libertarian uh, platform, people just citizens across the nation. I think everybody is is really tired of of the mainstream media, 
Uh, we are now, thankfully, we have through the internet and social media, we have different outlets like, you know, anti-war, the anti-media, we have media roots, people like Abby Martin, Glenn Greenwald, Jeremy Scahill, you know, The Intercept, all these in investigative journalists, independent journalists. Do you feel like as a president, you can somehow have a press secretary, maybe um, a Ben Swan type character? Maybe shift the oh, dynamic. I like that. I like that suggestion truth in, truth, too. Truth yeah. in media. <laughs> I like Maybe. that suggestion. Can we see the, the the actual administration take a a step in changing focus and saying, hey, instead of sitting with Wolf Blitzer and CNN, and no offense to anybody from that sure. camp, but <laughs> we're going to give our time to let's say you know one of these outlets, um, and if, and, and sh shift the dynamic because that kind of gives it to the to the credible, the uh, honest and. and integral and also people with integrity in that in that you know no, and I think I think you're pointing out the future of journalism I think you're pointing out the future of media and right now we're experiencing that I mean social media earned media right now I mean we're uh, arguably pushing an audience of uh, 25 million right now which is just amazing it's, I'm here <laughs> <laughs> right right um, uh, would you, uh, as a president, would you appeal or, or just end uh, the Patriot Act, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act? Well, of course, I'm not getting elected a dictator. I'm not getting elected king. If I could wave a magic wand, uh, we might theoretically talk about whether... Uh, yes, I would wave the Patriot Act, but I can't wave a magic wand. So coming out of Congress, uh, I, I'm going to lobby that... Uh, the Patriot Act has way overstepped uh, its bounds and with regard to uh, military appropriation uh, look military spending has gone way up uh, and it's because uh, it's under the guise of paying for ongoing wars when the reality is it's just the ongoing military I, I'm Bill Weld and myself are pledging to submit a balanced budget in the first 100 days of office and that would mean uh, cutting military spending it would mean uh, addressing the entitlements, something that neither you could have a very fair means testing to go along with Social Security. How much money did you put in? Should you get back more money than what you put in given a certain level of income? Mm -hmm. I think you could have a very fair means testing. Would, to follow up with that, would people be given the option to opt out of Social Security and say instead of Social Security I would pay for a private uh, type uh, fund and then not receive Social Security? Would that be an option? Uh, that would be an option that if it came out of Congress, if it passed Congress and came on my desk for signature, I would sign that legislation. Uh, I don't think it's going to come out of Congress, though, uh, but it's something that I very much support. Um, a, a little bit more fun type questions. Uh, I, <laughs> those I, were fun. Those are, those are old for me. It was fun, but <laughs> well, maybe lighthearted. Um, as you're an athlete. You're a tremendous athlete. You've uh, I don't know about tremendous, but a little bit of a uh, ox oxymoron at 63 well, years old. Hey, not many people have been to the highest peaks of all different mountains. It's and, true. It's true. Um, this would be more of a, a, a selfish question, but uh, you know, a bunch of us here we're Circassian. Uh, we're from the Caucasus Mountains, and uh, we have the highest uh, mountain in Europe, which is Mount Elbrus. So I was wondering if you're familiar with that area, or if you've ever been there. Well, I climbed Mount Ever, uh, Mount Elbrus. Uh, oh, you have. Well, I've climbed the Seven Summits, the right. highest mountain on each continent, and, to, <laughs> and of course, Elbrus <laughs> is the highest mountain on uh, uh, on the continent of uh, of Europe. Well, you've been to our homes then. Yes. Oh, uh, wow. Would you wow. Uh, would you uh, 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 receive like Would you like to have a welcoming there, like a reception there, inviting you over? Oh, someday I would love One to day. have that, and I really enjoyed the trip and. Just a little trivia of the seven, uh, it was the easiest of the seven because, you know, you did get to take a chairlift up to those uh, barrel huts oh, Okay. And start <laughs> from there. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, again, thank you very much uh, for your time with us. Uh, uh, no, thank you. And, and I know where you're from now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's very cool. Very thank you. cool. Thank you very much. I, I was struck by um, getting out of the airplane in Mineral Vodi. Okay. And um, I had to take a pee. And so I asked my guide, I said, is it okay to take a pee? And he said, no. He said, there are dozens of eyes on you right now. And if you take a pee here in the parking lot, you're going to get hit with a $250 U.S. fine. A U.S. fine? A U meaning U.S. dollars. It's going to be oh, a U.S. Okay. Two, so the US is two, find two, $250, you know, fine. 
And no, I will walk you back to the terminal. Okay. So I hope maybe has that changed? I that was uh, that things was, there don't change much. <laughs> that but was in two thousand five. I'll have to test it see if it, uh, if I get busted for that. Um, so, but, but just bring us back just one um, the non-aggression principle, yes. which is at the core of the libertarian philosophy. H how would we able to apply that to to our current government in, in to f to further that that. Well, that the non-aggression principle really is um, it, it is uh, uh, central to the Libertarian Party, and uh, government is force, um, and so judicious use of force to protect us against individuals, groups, corporations, foreign governments that would do us harm. So. One thing that I think is misunderstood when it comes to libertarians, we're not isolationists. We're non-interventionists. We want to rule the world with free market uh, and diplomacy. We want to be very engaged in what is going on in the world. And if we are attacked, we're going to attack back. But the non-aggression principle, if we're going to be attacked, the consequence of that is what we're currently experiencing. Um. Lastly, uh, Joe Rogan. Yes. Does he have a role in your administration? That would be an, I'm sure Joe, being as successful as he is, that would probably be about the last thing that he want, would want to do. Now, I will tell you an untold story about the interview is, is that before the interview, he plays pool. And so we played three games of nine ball. I will tell you that in those three games of nine ball, I probably sunk a total of five balls, but uh, two of them happened to be the nine ball. So I was the victor <laughs> in two out of three <laughs> nine ball competitions. Well, he takes alpha brain to, to, to do that. Um, <laughs> maybe he could be a jester in your administration. But um, that, oh. that pretty much wraps us up. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, that was fun. I Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Can we get Thank a shout you. out for Network of Radio? Of course, of course. Shout out for Network Radio. I want to give a shout out for Network Radio. Awesome. <laughs> Rock. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Really Thank appreciate you. it.